Hello friends. In today's class, we are going to talk about performance of demand paging. Welcome here and we are talking about performance of the demand paging and here are a few steps which are being uh, summarized. So these are stages in the demand paging and we are talking about a worst case situation. Uh, this I already explained you but uh, this this points are in now in much detail that uh, we will get a trap from the operating system because we are trying to access an invalid page invalid page okay so invalid page access will cause the trap from the operating system the save the user register and the process state okay no uh, trap is an is an interrupt okay so we uh, Whatever the process that you are executing that save that status, determine the determine that interrupt was a page fault. Check out the page reference was legal and determine the location um, of the page in the desk. Okay, so we have to first find that it is a legal page. It is a legal page and the page is not in the memory. Okay, so the page is not in is not in memory is the actual cause. Is the actual cause now issue a read from the disk uh, disk to a frame okay and wait for the queue of the device until the read request is serviced wait for the device seek and latency time begin the transfer uh, for page and pay begin the transfer of the page to a free frame okay so we'll read it uh, uh, first we have to wait for the device uh, there may be a queue uh, wait, wait for the device queue and wait for the disk uh, disk and uh, seek uh, wait for the device seek and the latency time seek or the latency time that is the disk read time okay disk uh, read time and then uh, begin the transfer and bring the frame okay uh, while waiting allocate the cpu to some other user okay so now cpu will not sit idle and that is the multi programming advantage receive an interrupt from the disk uh, when the io is completed so now uh, it will in disk will inform in form of again what will come here in this case is interrupt okay and save the register of the process state of the other user that also you need to save determine the interrupt from the disk correct the page table okay now we have to do this correction Okay, correct the page table and other tables show the process uh, that uh, to show the process is now in uh, correct the page table okay wait for the cpu to be allocated uh, uh, wait wait for the cpu to be allocated to this process again and restore the user register process state and the new table state and resume the interrupted instruction okay resume the interrupted instruction uh, that word uh, okay okay so now it's save the status and uh, uh, don't get confused with this statement resume the interrupted instruction um, it always execute the it save the save the next address huh? it is though it is written in this way save the interrupted save the instruction uh, save the interrupted instruction save the saving the next address so it will start execution of the next instruction huh? so that instruction always it complete next instruction it will do fine so uh, there are three major aspect and what we'll try to do here that we'll try to uh, combine this all these three uh, all all the uh, performance or the worst case scenario will combine into some sort of time so service the interrupt uh, and this three major activity one of the major activities servicing the interrupt uh, read the page and restart the process okay so there are three major times are there servicing the interrupt and read the page and restart the process now page fault rate will be between zeros and one okay so some rate if p is equal to zero no page fault p is equal to one that every reference will be the page fault so is effective access time effective access time here in this case written as one minus p one minus p is the page fault rate is p Okay, so let's say there is a fifty percent chance that point five zero okay percent chance that it will cause a page fault. So one minus p time it will not cause any page fault. It will not cause 
any page fault. Okay, 1 minus p time it will never cause a page fault. So that time it will take memory access time. Okay, whatever the main memory access time we are having. Main memory access time. That it will take. P times it will take the page fault and it's here page for overhead means uh, here we are servicing the interrupt, swap out the page, read the page and swap in the page, okay. So that time it will take, okay. So effective access time, this is a regular memory access time and then all the overhead page fault, what we can say is uh, this entire time we can say is page fault service time. Okay, so that way. Now, suppose memory access time is 200 millisecond and page fault page fault service time is 8 millisecond. So this is what, this is not a one time, this is a lump sum time that is given to you. So what, uh, so that, that will become here, uh, this uh, 1 minus P into 200 and P into 8 millisecond. And uh, this is a very long time and this is in nanosecond to 200 and this millisecond converted to nanos, nanosecond. So 8 into uh, millisecond means 10 to the power minus 3. So now 8 into I can say 10 to the power 6 into 10 to the power minus 9. That will become 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this many. Okay, and then P into this uh, and uh, uh, there will be a bracket 200 uh, minus 200 P. So that will become this value. Now, if one excess out of 1000 causes the page fault, okay, okay, if one excess out of 1000 causes the page fault, then your P will be, page fault rate will be 1 over 1000, right, so that you will agree with me on this, that so effective excess time will become what, 200 plus 1 over 1000, okay, memory excess time plus page fault into, and that is more clean formula what is this here in this case is a uh, okay fine uh, let's stick to the formula 1000 into 799 and 800 zero. and that will make it uh, 200 plus 79999.8 okay and uh, and that will approximately add up to your uh, uh, 8.1 or 8.2 in this case. Okay, so that will be approximately add up to this. Okay, so it says that uh, this is the answer. And here you can have uh, estimated access, effective access time is 8.2 microsecond. Microsecond, okay, so effect, so 200 uh, nanosecond. Uh, effectively becomes what a 8.2 microsecond which is uh, which is higher inside nanosecond becomes microsecond higher inside I can say a two zero zero okay a two zero zero I can say nanosecond and which is effectively you know 40 times larger than this huh? this you do divide by that is 40 times larger than this So if, if, so that is slowing down the entire process by 40, 40, 40 percent, 40 times, not percent, 40 times. Uh, if the performance degradation is less than 10 percent, uh, then, then in that case, uh, uh, it has to be, if I less than 10 percent, uh, 200 will become, let's say, maximum, I can say 220. Okay, so 220 is my effective access time and uh, it should be greater than what, 200 plus 799. 7 triple line and 800p and in that case p should be less than okay p should be less than 0.00025 that one page for in any 4 lakh memory access okay so that is will give you only 10 percent of performance degradation okay now remember this thing that 220 should be a greater value or equal you can say in this value and that comes 20 should be greater than this and P should be uh, this 20 divided by this value and that should be uh, P should be less than huh? P should be less than uh, this value that is 4 lakh memory access.
yes okay so this is the performance of your demand paging okay so uh, the effective formula here in this case is only this okay and uh, this is the different various event that can occur okay so we are done with this part in the next section what we are going to do is uh, we are going to solve few gate question related with this okay so that's all for this section estimated uh, uh, sorry uh, effective access time and now let's uh, apply this concept and solve few questions thank you